key features of 18th century warfare. And make sure you stay awake for this one. Now, the first uh, key feature of 18th century warfare was suddenly armies were huge. Instead of the few thousand soldiers that were on the battlefields of Naseby or battlefields of Hastings, suddenly you've got armies not of thousands, not tens of thousands, but hundreds of thousands. Uh, in the Spanish War of Succession, uh, the British field army of 150,000, and the British army was usually you know, 50, 60,000 even during peacetime. Uh, this was because governments were becoming uh, slightly more powerful and had better uh, bureaucratic systems in order to manage armies of this size. The second uh, key feature of warfare in the 18th century was the introduction of light artillery. Um, new techniques in casting brass had meant the cannons had become lighter and the gun carriages had become lighter too. Um, and these became a key feature on the battlefield. In 1709, at the Battle of Malpaquet, the uh, British had decimated the French army using many of these light cannons. Because of uh, this new uh, weaponry they needed and the size of the army, the British government set up the War Office based in Horse Guards Parades. Uh, if you want the date of that, 1722, just checking. Um, and the War Office, um, they uh, took charge of many aspects of, uh, of warfare. They um, introduced a basic uniform with a red coat and a white gaiters. Uh, not very practical, but it looked good. Um, they introduced training. Uh, for soldiers, basic training, usually drill, but they did uh, practice the volley of fire, where they one would fire a musket and then duck whilst he reloaded, go to the back, and the next person would fire. So there's constant firing at the enemy. Um, they introduced regular equipment. So, for example, had the, um, all soldiers were issued with the brown vest, flintlock musket. Uh, there was some training for officers too, although most uh, officers avoided doing it and straight onto the battlefield, so that had limited impact. Uh, but the War Office was a great uh, administrative machine to organise uh, the soldiers. They also had a hand in recruitment as well. Um, and lots of soldiers did volunteer uh, for patriotic reasons, but they also had to rely on the militia who were forced to sign up, to conscripted. And they also used press gangs. Uh, soldiers would go around pubs, uh, get people drunk, and then knock them over the back of their head, and they'd wake up the next morning barracks. Um, and uh, the war office also laid on you know, these barracks for soldiers to, uh, to stay in, to be billeted in, but conditions were often very poor. And they also went on campaign, tried to provide the soldiers with food, but often failed, um, or the rations were so poor that um, the soldiers still had to live off the land and go pillaging quite often. Um, so the war office was created. Now, at the same time, in the 18th century, it's a great, uh, um, a huge event in France in 1789, the French Revolution. And this led, uh, in France, the creation of this new idea of warfare, total warfare. Uh, in Britain, before this, the government had still avoided war if it could because it was too costly. Wars were fought with limited gains. But when the French Revolution happened in 1789, because all the monarchies of Europe wanted to destroy the French Revolution, um, the revolutionary government introduced this idea uh, of total war. Uh, there's the levée en masse. Uh, everybody had to join the army if they were a fighting age, they were fighting fit. If you couldn't join the army, then you expected to be growing food for the army, or you were expected to be making bullets for the army, making weapons for the army, uh, making uniforms for the army. So the whole nation was at war. Now this meant that, uh, that change warfare, because casualties could be extremely high because there was so, many, so much manpower available. And also wars became, uh, in, during this period, not about, uh, not about limited gains, but about conquest. And you have the Napoleonic Wars where he tries to uh, conquer the whole of Europe to spread the ideals of the French Revolution. Now this dies out um, as the uh, with the French Revolution, but it was an idea uh, that governments were to take forward later, uh, especially in the earlier parts of the 20th century.